Anik, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. And uh, a big congratulations to you on winning the CIO award uh, last week at the Philly CIO event. Uh, so very big congratulations to you and uh, the NSF team. And um, why don't we start off with a quick introduction about yourself and uh, NSM. Thank you for inviting me and I'm glad to be here with you today. Thank you for the kind words on the award. Uh, as I've mentioned from time to time, it's typically the team that's doing most of the work. So it belongs to them first and then to me. Uh, but I appreciate the recognition. So uh, Ivanshu, uh, I've been at NSM um, for the last four and a half years. So my current responsibility is that of being the global CIO at NSM. We have about 25 different lines of businesses. We underwrite specialty insurance. It's largely property and casualty. We play both in the B2B and B2C space. We've got a million customers across these two lines, about 15,000 broker relationships, and we are in 22 different offices um, across North America and Europe. We've grown uh, organically as well as through acquisitions, and um, you know these are exciting times for us. For me personally, I have started my career in banking, then I moved to enterprise resource planning, did consulting for a while, spent some time in telecom, then home security, and now most recently, it's been insurance. Thank you, Nick, uh, for the introduction. Um, so as we move along, like, if you don't mind kind of talking a little bit about, you know, technology, uh, especially in today's world, right? How the boundaries are kind of collapsing, and, and we just heard the other day as well, at the conference, it's not about so much, you know, technology is just an enabler, but you know, the why, uh, why do something, right? So from your perspective, how do you see things, especially as the case of NSM? So Hibanshu, in our case, we've grown very rapidly. So over the last four years, we more than doubled the amount of premiums we underwrite. And this growth, as I mentioned, has come in part organically and then through a bunch of acquisitions. As a result of that, our technical landscape has become rather complex. So we have, on the one hand, older technologies, 4GL technologies like Supernova, and then we have PHP, we have Java, .NET, Ruby on Rails, and then we have cloud technologies and more recent modern platforms. So it's the gamut. So what matters to us then is number one, as we continue to grow and because we have so many businesses, how do we have consistency in the tech stack so we get the right scale that we want to develop over time? The second aspect is how do we ensure that these solutions are actually enabling the business in a meaningful way? So from that perspective, I've insisted that each of my technology leaders understand their business segments really well. And then secondly, try and create solutions that are as ubiquitous as possible. So if it's APIs, those APIs have to translate and be utilized across the board. If it's certain platforms that we partner with, we don't want a proliferation of too many platforms. Uh, we want simplicity so we can continue to put in the right kinds of products and services we need and then grow. And then thirdly, if it's a packaged application, we want to make sure that there is as much out of the box utilization as we as we possibly can. And then we develop additional uh, capabilities outside of those platforms. So together with all of this, we want to make sure that our solutions are helping uh, NSM to in a very profitable way moving forward. No, that's that sounds great. So to be successful, what are the key things that you think are required for a modern CIO today? If you can show some light, that would be great. Yes, certainly. So um, you know the, the ecosystem around us uh, is changing very rapidly. Right, businesses are getting transformed faster than they ever did before. So I think the first and primary aspect is the CIO really has to understand the business that he or she is supporting. And the CIO's leadership team has to do the same thing. If you know your customer well, if you know the market well, you're in a position to leverage technology in a more effective way. So I'd say that's that's point number one. The second aspect is I feel no one can do things on their own, right? So you have to establish a very solid, effective team, one that creates the vision along with you, buys into the vision, and is willing then to execute on that vision in an effective way. And this is not then limited just to the technology team. This extends beyond the team to all the business partners because they're the ones who are driving the business ecosystem. So developing that trust-based relationship, making sure that the vision is articulated in a meaningful way to the business partners, and then there is buy-in. So that's the second aspect. I'd say the third aspect is relentless focus on execution. You can have the best strategy, 
If you can't execute on time and within budget, a lot of things start falling apart. I think the fourth aspect is making sure that you have absolutely the best talent that you can possibly get. And then keeping that talent engaged and enthused about where you're headed. And then things are changing so rapidly, it's very important to keep abreast of all the changes in the technical landscape. So I think a combination of these kinds of aspects then creates a culture where you can have more innovation, you can have the right solutions for your business partners and grow the business. So Nick, what is the role of uh, partners? Um, you talked about the business partners, you know, there are different types of partners, right? The technology partners as well. So what was is the role of that from your perspective and what is the most important aspect as you kind of look for some partners like that? Yeah, so I would say the external partners are incredibly important because none of the organizations can have all the expertise they need to address their business needs in a rapidly changing and evolving environment. So if I were to break that down into a few segments, there could be what I'd call staff augmentation partners on the one hand, right? where there are simple projects, you have a transactional relationship, there's the right skill set, you get the skill set, you execute on smaller projects or on projects per se. Then on a slightly different level, I think we want strategic partners, you know, partners who put in the effort and have the ability and the expertise to understand your business, to understand where that business can be, and then bring to the table solutions that we ourselves internally within the company have not thought about. Then there would be a set of partners who effectively provide packet solutions to you, platforms that your business could execute on. So within all these segments, I think it becomes important to ensure that the relationship is not based just on contracts. So I personally look for partners, you know, after we are done with our contractual negotiations, a partner who's going to be there with you to get the right outcome because the needs and the outcome could change over time. As the business evolves and shifts, different outcomes are required. So, so a partner who's vested you know, in the exercise just as much as you are is the one I'd look for. And then again, uh, if, if the relationship is based on trust and outcome, then people won't become defensive. Now, there, will there be challenges? Absolutely. I mean, there'll be times when things just don't go well. But if the relationship is developed with the right intent, then the intent on both sides is right. A lot of magic can be generated, right? You can generate effective shareholder value. Sure. Uh, I think so relationship is a very important aspect. You know, if you don't mind kind of also talking us a little bit about our partnership and, you know, how it has been able to bring to bear uh, and address some of your needs, that would be great. Yes, certainly. So when we were looking for partners initially for the kind of landscape we had, we looked at several different companies. And then as we turned to Brillio, I met with a gentleman called Mark Burler first and then Himanshu next with you. And it became very clear to me that there was a strong, strong desire to ensure that you did the right things for us. And uh, it's a very generic statement, right? The right things. But that entails understanding our industry, making the effort to understand where we are headed making the effort to ensure that you have people associated with our projects who stay with the projects for the longer longer duration so they can learn and they can grow. And then lastly, you know, Ivanshu, there were situations when all of a sudden I came to you guys and said, listen, we need to run this old, old platform and we can't find the expertise, <laughs> you know, out there. And you guys somehow figured out, got the right people, jumped in right there with us. You didn't, for instance, try to build that uh, specific situation. I mean, you, you worked as excellent partners and, you know, th those kinds of situations uh, help build up the trust. And then lastly, I think we've hit every objective we have set in terms of our dates. So the execution has been great. So I think th those are the things that really stood out from a brilliant perspective for me. Well, thank you, Nick, for that kind words over here. So how do you see, like, from, from the next step standpoint of view, as we go further along, next couple of years, how do you see both for NSM and us uh, as, a, as a partners? So, you know, at NSM, we have a desire to grow rapidly. So our footprint will increase. And as the footprint increases, there'll be other types of platforms that come in. There'll be other technologies. The security aspects, cybersecurity aspects, and the infrastructure aspects will become more complicated. With new innovation, there'll be other solutions. So a combination of all this has to be addressed. Our quality of earnings cannot suffer, which means the solutions we put in place have to truly enable our businesses. And so with a more complex environment like that, there'll be a need for help from Brillium on the one part. 
there'll also be a need for Brilliant to understand how this ecosystem and the market is evolving. And um, it'll be in part a learning exercise for both of us. And there'll be an opportunity to execute well together and do a lot of interesting things. So as we grow, we absolutely want to increase our margins. So the efficiencies will have to fit in and they'll fit in with technology-based solutions. There'll be aspects where we change our processes. There'll be transformation going on in several areas. And so it'll be a complex set of projects that we'll have to pivot, you know, catch, <laughs> work towards and we'll have to do it together. So get ready for the ride, my friend. Well, uh, thank you so much. I think so this is uh, really insightful. And I must say, this has been a great partnership for us as well. You know, it's it's all about, as you kind of mentioned, it's not so much about the contract, it's about understanding each other well, the, the trust factor, and then working together as a team, as like having embodying the same culture. So I think so we are very, very excited to be part and parcel of your team. And we look really forward to working with you closely together with you and your team. So thank you so much for your time again, Nick. Thank you. No, my pleasure. And um, thank you for everything you guys have done for us. Great, let's continue the partnership.